So uh, let's move on with our lesson. And I welcome you. As usual, I would request you to watch all my physics and chemistry videos. Watch uh, my videos that uh, actually uh, maybe motivates you. Search for the content that fits you. I ask you to subscribe, I ask you to share, and I request you to be my online student always. Now, uh, having done with the pressure in solids in our previous video, I want us to, de to see and deal with the pressure in liquids. When a diver is uh, some depth down the water, mm, the water above him it can't be her, uh, will exert some pressure on him. So, what is there is, not only solids exert pressure, even liquids, and also even uh, gases. So, the best term to use is to say, even fluids can exert pressure. The air above you exerts pressure to you, though you cannot feel it. And its effects can be felt. Later on, when we shall be discussing about atmospheric pressure, you will see and understand what I'm talking about. Pressure in liquids. Just to remind you, when we were dealing with pressure in solids, I gave two factors affecting pressure in solids. That was force, that is weight, and the area of conduct between the solid and the surface. Now, I have two factors affecting the pressure in liquids. One is the depth of the liquid. The higher you go inside the water, the higher you will experience more pressure. So pressure in liquids increases with the depth. I can also comfortably say pressure in fluids increases with depth. That's what you are supposed to know. Um, and in this case, using that knowledge, uh, whenever we are building dams, um, we have to make the bottom part of the dam to be very thick to withstand the high pressure at the bottom of the dam where the pressure is high. So uh, that is it. And... Uh, there's a point here I'm giving you. Uh, pressure increasing with the depth of the liquid explains why a diver at the bottom of the sea experiences more pressure due to more weight of the water above him than a diver near the surface of the sea. That is, the depth is one of the main factors affecting the pressure in liquids. Uh, the other factor is density of the liquid. Density of the liquid. The denser the liquid, the higher the pressure it will exert. So, uh, later on, when we shall be calculating these pressures in liquids and fluids, you will understand why. Yes. Um, you see, uh, there's a consideration here I want you to see. Consider two identical cylinders filled with water and glycerin. And of course, the densities are different. For water, is 1,000 kilogram per meter cubic. And for glycerin here, you are given to be 1,260 kilogram per meter cubic, respectively. Uh, pressure at point B is greater than pressure at point A. I will show you that diagram. Why? Glycerin is denser than water. Glycerin is denser than water. If glycerin is denser than water, even if they have the same depth, uh, the pressure exerted by glycerin will be higher or greater than that of water or excited by water because density of the liquid is a factor to consider. So if you have point A and point B, point A b b belongs to that of um, glycerin, point A, water, the same depth, then at point B, where it is glycerin, then it will have a greater pressure. Nice. Now look at this diagram. Uh, we have point A, B, and C. I think this is what you did in primary. We are still using it. 
Uh, considering the depth of a hole A, it is higher than that of B and of course C. So where they throw water will be depending on the pressure it has. So A, having the greater pressure, it will throw or jet the water farthest distance compared to B and C. And of course B will jet the farthest distance compared to C. Uh, look at this. This is a dam. The upper part is not that thick compared to the lower part. Why? You know, the upper part is having a less pressure because it is just almost close to the surface. So the pressure there is very low. But the bottom part is, is thick. So the higher you go, or the, you know, the deeper you go, not the higher, the deeper you go, the pressure increases. And therefore, it will require a stronger wall to withstand the pressure. Sometimes we experience some um, dams bursting and causing a lot of damages. I'm not saying it is the problem, but maybe it is one of the problems there that they didn't consider the, the uh, making the bottom part to be thick to withstand the high pressure. So uh, the diagram I'm just sh showing you here is uh, um, we have water, then we have the colored water to show you. You know, it's colored uh, majorly. So that you can see, you know, sometimes water, no difference. So sometimes water is colorless, and you may not see clearly the depth. Now, the more you put this part into the water, the more you dip it, the more the height h increases. Simply because uh, pressure in liquids increases with depth. Water is a liquid; it follows the same scenario. Uh, at the same levels, water will draw at the same distance. Why? Because at the same depth, um, it has the equal pressure. So it, they will draw. You, you can't uh, exp uh, expect to draw water at a different distance. They will draw water at the same uh, distance. That is the point that we are supposed to check on it. So uh, just that's my first point, that water or liquids, their pressures increase with depth. Yes. Now. Mm, we saw how you, you can calculate pressure in solids. We said it is force over area. Now look at this. Just to look at what uh, I have on the board. It's a cylinder. You can also use to use a rectangular glass block. It, this one is just a pure cylinder. It has liquid up to a height H. And this cylinder has a cross section area A. The height is h. The cross section area is a. A, a. a very simple question: What is the volume of the liquid? It is a h. The volume of the liquid is a h. That is the volume of the liquid. What is the mass of the liquid? What is the mass of the liquid? The mass of the liquid. If the volume is a h, the mass of the liquid. You know. If, if, if you want to get the mass using the formula of density is close to mass of a volume. If you want to get the mass, it is density times the volume. So we have agreed the volume is A H. So for us to get the mass, we multiply with the density. We multiply with the density. A H. You multiply with the density. Now we get the mass. Mm, from mass to weight, because we, we, we cannot use mass, we want to use weight. From mass to weight, now our, 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 um, our mass is um, A H rho. Rho is the sign for density. Symbol for density, rho, A H rho. F to move from mass to weight, multiply by gravity. So that, that's why A H G rho is the weight and from pressure in solids pressure is given by force over area now that weight which is uh, a h rho g is the force you divide by the area so the a will cancel the a so we remain with h rho and g to be the formula to calculate pressure in liquids it's a good uh, session that you need to interact with it very well now what is there is that uh, Whenever you want to calculate pressure in, soli in, in liquid studies or in fluids, to be specific, this formula, H rho G, 
or a zero H, whatever, um, does not only being used to calculate pressure in liquids, it is in fluids, but majorly in liquids. Later on, when we shall be calculating the height of the mountain, we shall require this formula. Yet, it will not be liquid, it will be a fluid, that is a gas. Um, so meaning what? There is a very, very important statement here. If you get it, we will never quarrel with you once again. From the formula, it is clear that pressure in fluids does not depend on cross-section area of the condenser holding the liquid. It does not depend. It only depends on the, the depth, which is height, and the density of the liquid. Of course, the G is constant. If we are here on the Earth, it is constant. I cannot in include the gravity being the factor. So we use the two. Look at an example there. A diver um, working underwater is 15 meters. I don't know wh what is he doing underwater. Uh, below the surface of the sea, calculate the pressure due to water experienced by the diver. Have you ever gone inside water then you feel like there's a weight above you? I have not. I, I have been diving but I have never failed. But it is there. Like right now where you are, there is an at atmospheric pressure applied on your head. But you cannot feel it. But its effects can be seen when we shall be looking at the atmospheric pressure. Now this one, this person, this diver, is uh, 15 meters below the surface of water, of the sea. Calculate the pressure due to water experienced by the diver. G is 10. The density of water is one of the sea water to, to be specific because uh, fresh water is one gram per centimeter cubic. Now, because sea water is somehow denser than this uh, fresh water, its density is higher. So it's 1.03 grams per centimeter cubic. Um, our formula to calculate the pressure in fluid or liquid is H rho G. H is 15 meters, no problem. G is 10 newton per kilogram, no problem there. But our density we are given in grams per centimeter cubic, which is not um, the way to go. So we have to take it back to kilogram per meter cubic. That is to the SI unit. So what is there? I can say it is. Eh? Um, let's convert it. So it is 10 30 kilogram per meter cubic. H rho G, 15 times 10 times 10 30. A very simple mathematics. You get it to be uh, 15. I mean 154,500 newton per meter square. That is it. Look at that. If the figure below shows a, a liquid in a bale, pale, pa pale. Uh, if the liquid has a density of 0 0.79 grams per centimeter cubic, uh, determine the pressure exerted at the bottom of the pail by the liquid. H rho G. Our H is 45 centimeters. Make it meters, become 0 0.45. Um, the density is 0 0.79. Make it kilogram per meter cubic. Uh, you multiply by 1,000. One, you get 790. Then G, of course, it is 10, whether given or not. But if you are given, use the one given. Sometimes the examiner can decide to give you 9.98 or 9.8 or 9.9. But if not given, work with 10. Like in, in, in our case here, we don't have, so we will work with 10. 0 0.45 times 790 times 10. You will get your answer very well. But do, don't forget that the unit is just that of pressure, Newton per meter square or Pascals. Uh, suggest a reason why pale manufacturers prefer the shape shown to other shapes. Yes, why mostly this one? Why this one always? Why? Why don't they uh, create the one that is, you know, the um, cross-section area is equal all through, but they prefer this. It goes as it widens up. Do you know that? Get this. Uh, to reduce the height of the pail, but maintain the capacity. You know, when it um, goes outwards, it is creating more space. Meaning it will just, you know, end somewhere. It can even hold a, a large volume of water, but the height is so reduced. Reducing what? The pressure. So the pressure is reduced. So the bottom of the bale will not get damaged easily. So to reduce the height of the pail, 
but maintain their capacity. This reduces the pressure exerted by the liquid at the bottom of the pail. That's the point. Yeah. Calculate the pressure exerted by 76 millimeters column of mercury, given that its density is 13.6 grams per centimeters cubic. Uh, here, they have just taken you to measurement one. Why? Because you have to make some conversion. Convert 76 millimeters to meters, you divide by 1,000. Convert 13.6 grams per meters, uh, I mean per centimeters cubic to kilogram per meters cubic, you multiply by 1,000, you get 13,600. Then G is 10. So it's going to be 76 over 1,000 times 13,600 times 10, you will get that pressure in Newton bar meters uh, square, just like I'm showing you over there. Um, look at this. It's a, this is a question to, to play with your mind. Mm, I'm not saying that we are playing with your mind, but if the question is the one playing with your mind. I, I, I'm not playing with your mind, personally. Um, a column of glycerin, 8.2 meters high. A column of seawater, 10.08 meters high. A column of mercury, 0 0.76 meters high. And a column of fresh water, 10.34 meters high, exert the same pressure at the bottom of a container. Arrange these substances in decreasing order of their densities. So in short, we start with the most dense one. The most dense one. So now here, uh, you know, the densities, you know, they apply the same, same, um, they produce the same, same pressure. With those different densities, as you can see, uh, we have 8 meters, 8.2 meters, 0 0.76 meters, uh, 10.34 meters, 10.08 meters. Let's start with the, the one that exerts the greatest, I, I mean, the one that has the greatest height. That is the fresh water. You know, for fresh water to produce the same, same pressure as mercury, it has to be a height of 10.34. But mercury will just produce the same pressure as water with a height of 0 0.76. Meaning mercury is denser than water. So in this case, the question is, arrange these substances in decreasing, decreasing order. So water should be on the far end. We start with mercury, uh, which is 0 0.76. We move to glycerin. We move to sea water and lastly to fresh water. That way, as you are seeing there, that is fine. Mm. Uh, I want to give you another concept here, which is under the pressure in liquids. It is known as the Pascal's principle, the principle of transmission of pressure in liquids. And I think this is your first time. This is your first time uh, stating a principle or a law, Pascal's. It is, uh, in fact, Pascal's principle is the first principle to be stated by physics students in their life. Later on, we shall state more. We shall state uh, law of electrostatics. We shall state mag and many others which shall follow. Um, look at this. Pressure applied at one point or at one part in the liquid is transmitted equally to all other parts of the enclosed liquid. Of the enclosed liquid. Demonstrating Pascal's principle. I will show you here. Just look at this. Um, you, you apply force in the plunger here. I mean, you, you apply force to the plunger. That, that is the smaller piston there. Uh, that force under a given area at this point of the piston will create a given pressure so the water will will cash out with equal pressure that it was applied here if you had applied here a pressure of 100 pascals when you combine the pressure at the three exits of water here or, the, or whatever the liquid it should be 100 pascals so that is the principle of transmission I mean the Pascal's principle. Uh, I will use another one. 
I will use an, 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 another example like this one, the, the one you are seeing on the board. When you apply for Zia, you, of course, this piston is smaller than this. It will create a pressure. That pressure will be transmitted equally to the other piston. You will understand this as we are uh, doing this. Now, applications of Pascal's principle. Now that when pressure is uh, uh, created or generated at one point, it is transmitted equally. Where do we use in real life? We use them in hydraulic press. We shall look at it. Hydraulic lift. We shall look at it. Hydraulic brake system. The major one we, that we are supposed to discuss it. Um, now let's look at the hydraulic machines. All these, let's call them hydraulic machines. Hydraulic lift, hydraulic press, hydraulic press system. We will categorize them as hydraulic machines. Are you ready? Of course you must. And you have to. You don't have an option that you are not ready. We have to. So uh, pressure here is given by force over the cross-section area. That is FS. S stands for small piston. Uh, so force at the small piston and the cross-section area at the small piston, we will do FS over AS. Should be equal to FL over AL. The AL stands for the large. That's what it should be there. That's what it should, it should be there. That is what it, it should assist you all through this uh, part. Look at this. Look at this. But I wish I started with a, a simpler one before we, we come to this. Let me look for one. Yes, and yeah, now this one is good for you. Then we go back to one. One, uh, it has a second step that we need to do it. So in this case, we have two newtons at the smaller piston. And the cross-section area is three. The other case, we have FL, which we, meaning we have not been given the force that was lifted. You know, we apply force at the smaller piston. Then it is supposed to lift a given force at the larger piston. And the cross-section the area there is 18 centimeters square. Now listen to me very well here. Uh, the pressure here is equal to the pressure at this larger piston. So, pick the one that has the complete values like this, the smaller piston, 2 over the cross-section area, which we have actually. Should be equal to FL over the cross-section area. In this case, there is no need for you to convert the area the, to the SI unit. There is no need. Unless, please hear me, unless you have been told, calculate the pressure at the smaller piston. That is when you will take 2 over, you convert this to meters cubic. But, they have asked you to find FL. Find the force. I almost say force. Find the force produced on the larger piston. It is 2 over 3 should be equal to FL over 18, nothing more. So FL is going to be 2 times 18 over 3. And you get just uh, your answer. Like in this case, we had to convert it first, but there is no need. But if you know, you will not follow what I've said. Uh, you know, sometimes you can be told to calculate the pressure at a given piston here. So what is there is um, you have to convert this. But you have just been asked about FL. No need to convert. You will still get the correct and it is allowed. Now let, let me take you back. The first question I told you not to worry about. Mm. The figure below shows two masses placed on a light pistons. The pistons are held stationary by the liquid whose density is 0 0.8 grams per centimeter cubic. Are you seeing any difference between these two, two questions? Between this one Eh, this one. Are you seeing any difference? Uh, you must be seeing a difference. Eh? Uh, in this case, look at this. Uh, the levels are the same. They are, on, you know, the levels are the same. That's why I just equated directly. Two over three should be equal to F L over eighteen. But in this case, my friend, uh, they are not equal. They are not equal. Meaning this is somehow not balancing with this. So, but anyway, the pressure at this point, together with the rho gh of 1.8 meters, should be equal to the pressure at the other side. What I do here is, now, let's calculate the pressure at the part B. Part B is all of this side. So we have a force, which we don't know, over the cross-section area. 
plus rho gh rho is the, um, are we dealing with which liquid 0 0.8 eh? so make it kilograms so it's going to be 800 so um, let me show you the workings here if there if, if, if you can see it no the workings will you will just follow it later on but let me tell you um the force here over the cross section area now this is where you are allowed to convert to meters cubic i mean meter square so uh, our force over the cross section area which is 2.5 but make it now meters square plus rho gh of this part rho which is 800 times g which is 10 times 1.8 should be equal now you add the two that you have found here that is f over the cross section area in meters square plus rho gh here should be equal to 60 make it weight 600 over 8 after converting it to meter square then you get your answer please don't allow it to to harass you it will not harass you then because you are being asked about the force you will get it in terms of newtons yes that question that example that i want you to check on today this one it's the same same thing mm, these are just liquids they're just liquids with different densities of course they will never have the same height just like the question i have given you for liquids to arrange their densities in this case uh liquid x is having a height of 40 centimeters liquid y is having a height of 30 centimeters and of course rho gh using 40 and rho gh using that should give you the same same value what differs is the density why because the g is 10 in both cases 40, 30 are different of, of heights. Also, the densities will be different. So do this. 40 of 100 times 10 times x should be equal to 30 of 100 times 10 times what? 1,000. 1,000 is... I've converted the density of um, liquid Y to kilogram per meter cubic. You will get your answer. Is there is nothing there to worry about. Mm. Now, we are still doing. Uh, that was hydraulic machine. Now, let's look at the hydraulic brake. Hydraulic brake, most vehicles nowadays work with hydraulic brake system. It works well. It utilizes the concept that when pressure is applied at, at one point, it is transmitted equally to all the other parts. It is transmitted equally to all the other parts. Now look at this. Whatever you always see uh, at the position where the driver sits is just the brake pedal. You can't see all the other parts. They are hidden within the vehicle. This is where you do, or this is what you do. You apply force at the brake pedal. You are the one to apply force using your leg. When you apply force, you know this is a lever. It creates pressure at the master cylinder. That pressure is transmitted equally to all the four wheels or mostly to the backward, to the rear wheels. Then the pressure is taken to what we call the slave cylinder. The slave, where? The slave cylinder. Now, le let me use uh, the diagram here. When a small force is applied on the brake pedal, it pushes the piston of the master cylinder inwards. This produces a pressure that is equally transmitted to the pistons in the slave cylinders. The pressure generates a force which pushes the pistons of the slave cylinder outwards. The pistons then push the brake shoes and therefore the brake lining outwards. The brake lining uh, touches the stops touches and stops rotating wheel drum that is where now the vehicle comes to stop this one is like an essay mostly text formats it's like like, like an essay describe the operation of the brake hydraulic brake system you are supposed to mention brake pedal master cylinder slave cylinders brake shoes brake lining i will also ask you a question what is the role of the return spring there's a spring there you can see the, uh, the return spring here the return spring returns the brake shoes into their original position after force on brake pedal has been removed. 
on brake pedal has been removed. That's the role of the uh, return spring. Uh, look at these liquids. There's a liquid here we call them brake fluid. Not any liquid can be used. Not what you know. Not any liquid. There are specific liquids that we always use. Even when you go to buy a brake fluid, you know you buy a specific one. Come here. Properties of hydraulic brake fluid. Properties of hydraulic brake fluid. It should not corrode parts of the system. It should be highly incompressible. It should have a low freezing point and a high boiling point. The first one is easily understood. It should not corrode the parts. Of course, water can corrode the parts because of rusting. It should be highly incompressible. You know, when you apply um, the force to create pressure, if it has air purple inside, it can be compressed and it will affect the functioning of the brake. If you ask, explain why a, um, a brake fluid having a pu air purple does not work efficiently, it's because it can be compressed. Hence, not functioning well. It should have a low freezing point. Nice. Have you ever parked a vehicle in a very cold place, like where I am? If you don't take care, if you just use any other liquid, the liquid will freeze. And it will be no longer a fluid, it will be a solid, which cannot work. So it should have a low freezing point. That's why most of the brake fluids, you know, they put some impurities to lower their freezing point. And also, when you are driving, you know, the engine ch ch creates or generates a lot of heat. The liquid should also have a very high boiling point. Yes, that's why we don't use water. Yeah. In fact, water, there is not, nothing that water actually qualifies to be used. Yes, so that is it. Now, mm, in my next, just slide to the next uh, video and watch the atmospheric pressure. The one I've just displayed to you. Thank you. God bless you. As usual, please, I'm teaching you. So kindly subscribe and share to your friends. Ambassador Foundation. Thank you.